It's like your cat. It's Saturday. It's mm -hmm. July 1st. It's like almost 12.30 right now. We already went to the bins. We were trying to get there by 8 when it opened, and we would have done a little intro video then. But somebody who's going to go unnamed, but their name might rhyme with Dickie. Really? <laughs> was taking her sweet time, yapping it up on the phone before 8 in the morning on a Saturday. I don't know what that's all about. Different time zone. Oh, okay. Uh, so anyway, so we weren't able to do that, but we went to the bins, got a ridiculous amount of stuff. But first of all, it's July 1st, which means what? What happened today? <laughs> Tickets went on sale. I was like, what? What happened today? <laughs> Tickets went on sale for the Boss Reseller Remix. Yeah, they've been selling like hotcakes, guys. When this video comes out, I think we're going to um, post it on Wednesday. Uh, tickets will still be on sale. All the links are down below, so make sure you do not miss out. There is a code to get $10 off of a virtual ticket if you cannot make it in person. But let me tell you, you do not want to miss out on the in-person part. And also, by the time this video comes out, you know what else will, will be live and happening? She's looking at me like, I don't know what you're talking about. I have no idea what she's we, talking about. We, along with Teresa, are guests on this week's Get Thrifty oh, podcast. That too. <laughs> and um, it's going live on the 4th, so I think Wednesday it'll be the 4th already. It'll be after the 4th. Mm -hmm. So I will have the link down below for that as well. We talked all about the Boss Free Seller Remix. You're not going to want to miss that. It's going to be fun. It was a fun um, fun interview show to record. And I love so, that podcast. Yeah, it's super it's rad. Interesting. But this is going to be a crazy weekend. So I'll show you here in a second all the stuff that we got. Just uh, We're not going to do the haul yet because we have a show on Sunday that we're going to do. And um, well, it's going to go tomorrow. We Well, right. So we got a ton of stuff today, but the the we want to make sure that we get a bunch of stuff tomorrow as well um, before we do like a full haul for this video plus a haul for Sunday. Mm -hmm. So we'll see how it goes. Plus we have Deb coming to visit with her four freaking dogs. So we're going to have seven freaking dogs seven dogs so i can guarantee I mean, you all seven dogs are the equivalent of about 65 pounds total <laughs> if that if that so to be fair i mean are they really seven dogs uh, because they can kind of just be mushed together into the size of one medium to large dog it's gonna be crazy but three of them are very young so it's gonna be some some craziness be happening some, some puppy snap and happen yeah so i'm gonna go ahead and guarantee guarantee you will get Cute, some puppy, serious puppy footage puppy action in this video mm -hmm. puffy and puppy because they're all palms yes so they're pretty poofy, pretty puffy, poofy, pretty poofy, poofy and puffy uh but yeah so there's gonna be a lot going on in this video aside from our haul uh, but let's go ahead and show you the magnitude of what we picked up today guys mm. what's that oh. mm. Mm. Oh my goodness, you guys, look at this. First of all, Vicky has four bags of stuff. One of four. them super overflowing. Yeah, four bags of stuff. But look at my bag. Look how huge mine is. I usually do like maybe 15 pounds. It's usually under $30. Um, this time I doubled that. I'm like at like 30 pounds and spent like $57. But there is all, actually a lot of really good stuff in there. I'm super excited about it. Um, look at it. Look at it look at it the real question is how much of this stuff is stuff vicky shouldn't have gotten because here's what happens she has one cart we each have one cart right i put all my stuff in there and then I, throughout the time that we're there we were there for like almost two and a half hours today i will go through each piece because i'll grab stuff and throw it in there that i'm like i'm not sure about and then i'll separate out the stuff that i actually want to get well vicky she makes plans to do such things she plans on it. Well, then my cart gets too full and I can't dig out the stuff on the bottom to double check it. So it gets like... crazy full. But here's the thing. There's other carts at the front, so we should be doing it when we go out because there's a chance there's going to be... It's like stuff where she's like, oh, I should look this up. And the next thing she knows, she's in the car and she's like, oh, I might have just bought a bunch of stuff that I didn't actually want. And I do throw it away, honestly. Yeah. Or it's like super stained. I'm not I'm not rescuing everything. Not everything's... You know, as Allie Root says, profits, not projects. Um... So That's I try true. not to have too many projects. No, but luckily we have Crystal when we do have a small project if something needs to be sewn or fixed. But we're going to go through this stuff ourselves uh, today. And then just so you, we just, I just wanted to show you like this is one day. It was a really good day. There was a lot of good stuff there. There were a lot of people there. Although I will say one other thing I would like to say, I don't know what happened, but in the time that we uh, last went to uh, go to the bins, they became infested with gnats. Oh, so there gross. were freaking 
it's hot. Like to, this week is like, uh, Vegas has finally gotten crazy hot, but there were like freaking flat, like little gnats everywhere. And it was driving me crazy. I'm like, what am I, a week old peach? If somebody forgot to throw out. A week old peach. Disgusting. Okay. It was gross. Plus everything's back to the usual where everybody goes and starts digging in the bins way before they're supposed to. It was even worse today. It was the worst today I've ever seen it. That's baloney, okay? You can play. Here we go, here we go, here we go. It's about, you know, this, like, we, we now, pause, pick me up. we now have a 4th of July, what do you Poppy call it? No, we now have our very own, uh, dog kennel, uh, what do you call it? Daycare. <laughs> daycare, doggy daycare overnight. Mom. We're just, Ripley cannot believe that she's got puppies. Grizz is pissed off and ready to go to sleep. Grizz says, <laughs> Luna is cuddling up with her. Like, Grizz says, this is, is bullshit. This is some bullshit. It's okay, Trix. And Ripley loves that she gets to be the she alpha. She really just wants to play with her. Oh, yeah. She's It looks like Ellie's not get that. <laughs> get him. Get him. Just think about it. Think about it. <laughs> get her out. Get her out. Get her. Go get her. Go All right, guys. Of course, we have Luna. We have Grizz. We have Ripley. And then we have Trixie, the little white one. And here we have Ellie. Ellie. Watch out. She's okay. And then we have. Oh, poor Jimmy. Nobody pays attention to Jimmy. And then Mason. And then. Yeah. <laughs> I know. We got Mason, who has to hang out over here, because his legs don't work so good. Oh, he doesn't like cameras either. What's that? What's, it's okay. What's Mason. that? Yeah, you're right. This is bullshit. You're with Grizz on this one. Hello. <laughs> it's a. It's right now. It's 105 degrees. It's uh, 1049. We just got done in the bins. We were in there for over two and a half hours. The gnats, now I'm a two week old peach. The gnats are out of freaking control. Yeah, it's really, it's really gross. gross. Get back in the frame, lady. Gnats or, or like fruit flies? I don't know what they are, but uh, they're gross. They're like fruit flies, same thing, right? Aren't I don't fruit know. flies and gnats the same thing? I don't know. I don't know, guys. Anyway, uh, I'm not we, a entomologist. we left Deb at home because she was still sleeping. Uh, Ripley was very patiently waiting for her new BFFs to be released from prison because they're in a pen and she wanted to play, but I wasn't going to let them out. Um, but yeah, we came here. I got, man, my haul today, real mediocre. Uh, Vic did a little better, but overall, like they were so, so, I think they're understaffed, so, so, so slow getting stuff, getting rotations. And then like this last rotation, it's like we waited forever and then I literally got two things that were super mediocre. Uh, luckily, Vicky actually got a couple of good things. So we're gonna film a little haul. I don't know exactly how we're gonna do that yet because we also have our show today, so we gotta have stuff to show for that. So we'll see, you'll figure it out when you watch the show, so mm -hmm. the video. Okay, that was all Vicky's stuff from yesterday. That's all my stuff from yesterday. I only have this measly little bag right here. Nothing super exciting. Uh, Vicky did get some really good stuff today. She's got, well, that's only, I think, one big blanket. But she's got this bag full, this bag, a lot of linens, you guys. And so I think what we're going to do, oh, hello. <clears throat> I think what we're going to do is uh, go through everything and kind of divide it up. And some of the stuff we're going to be showing on our Sunday live haul, because today is Sunday while we're filming. So when this comes out, you can, if you haven't watched the Sunday live haul, you'll see the rest of the stuff that we got. And then we're going to show, um, we're here in a minute, we're going to show you the other stuff. So it's going to be kind of split up. It's not going to be all stuff from one day. I know that's I ideal. I like doing the whole, here's everything that we got today in a 90 minute or two hour period. But because we got so much yesterday, and especially me getting kind of messed up today, we're going to split it up so we have good stuff to show in both the Sunday haul and this video. So here we go. Your makeup, honey. Okay. This is, my happy boy. is this your friend? <laughs> you do not want any of this. 
Hi, Mason. I won't get too close this time. Oh my goodness, we're going to do a haul now. We have so much stuff piled. We just had some people over and it's like we've got piles everywhere down here because, and we've got a puppy who's howling. Um, we have piles everywhere because we've now sourced the bins three days in a row. Haven't had a chance to process any of it, which usually you get right I started the same with the laundry day. the same day. Mm -hmm. So, howling puppy, <clears throat> howling puppy. Okay, so I'm gonna show you my haul from the last um, two days-ish. So this was Saturday and Sunday. We did go today on Monday, but uh, I'm gonna save some of that stuff for another haul video. So I'm not all of it are uh, out of this world things. Some of them is just bread and butter type stuff. So I'm just gonna show you what I have and we'll go from there. So uh, first thing is this sweatshirt. It's uh, kind of on the small side, but it is the Show Me Your Moo Moo brand. Um, and it looks like, I looked this up real quick, it's in, it feels crispy actually, like it's probably never been worn. Looks like this came as part of a sweatshirt and shorts set. Did not find the shorts, but did find the sweatshirt, so I think I'm going to price it around 40 bucks or so. Uh, let's see. I do have a pair of vintage Gitano uh, jeans made in the USA. They're just like high-waisted mom jeans, but they're cropped with some um, you know, frayed uh, legs. So these are pretty popular in style right now, and these will be listed for about forty to fifty dollars. Uh, let's see. I do have a pair of Abercrombie and Fitch um, plaid cargo shorts. These were like circa nineteen ninety, early two thousands. Also popular again. Um, you saw the show. I'm not a fan of cargo shorts. However, I will sell them. So probably 40, 50 bucks. I haven't quite looked those up. That might be a popular uh, colorway or pattern. If it is, then I'll price them a little bit lower. If not, that's where I feel comfortable with them. Uh, let's see. We talked about this yesterday briefly on our other show, but uh, the other day briefly on our show, but this is also, these are vintage 90s ex ex Express. Uh, baggy overalls. They're on a smaller size, they're a size small, uh, but 90s overalls, baggy, wide leg. These will go for 75 to $100 easily. Everything I'm talking about, I did get at the bins. So everything is an average of $1.69 a pound, sorry, $1.89 a pound. So most things I paid about $2 for or less. Um, these are just bread and butter. These are Buckle, the brand BKE Buckle. Super out of fashion as far as most women, but men's jeans, they're still wearing them. The same way they're still wearing Affliction even though it's very tired at this point. But those sell. So I'll price those somewhere around $40. Um, I did get this, uh, I believe this one is 90s, if not 90s, it's Y2K, but a long Levi's denim uh, skirt, like a maxi skirt. It's kind of like deconstructed looking, it's very cool. Um, maxi skirts, maxi denim skirts, regardless of who makes it or when, are always in fashion. Uh, and that look right now would go really well with the whole rave 90s revival thing. Uh, vintage Jan Sport backpack with the leather bottom. I don't pick them all up, but if it has a leather bottom, I'll pick it up. Uh, those last longer and those are vintage and it'll probably sell in the $40 range. It's dirty, needs to be washed. But those things you just throw them right in the washing machine. Turn them inside out sometimes. If not, I mean, it doesn't matter. They'll wash, they wash fine. Uh, let's see. I don't always pick up men's blazers, but certain ones I do. Um, certain high-end brands, cashmere blazers, or um, country type of Western blazers I'll pick up. This I picked up for the brand name, not for the um, necessarily the style, but it's a Brioni which is a high-end luxury menswear um, line. And this is just, a, it's a full cashmere sports coat, uh, blazer, sports coat, whatever you want to call it, four button, 100% cashmere. Uh, these do sell for, uh, you know, used even a couple hundred dollars. Um, the, the price originally is like over a thousand dollars new. So always worth picking up Brioni, even men's dress shirts, which are usually sit, Brioni dress shirts pick, uh, sell very well, even used. Well, let's see. It's just some basic boring pieces, nothing exciting there. 
But this is a pretty dress from this brand, Jody, California, made in the USA. This is usually typically an 80s or 90s brand. This looks very 90s as far as the dress goes. It's just a rayon uh, midi dress with a little floral print. I'll probably sell it for 40 or 50 bucks. It's not a super high-end brand. Um, vintage. 80s or 90s bechamel is the brand here that's the tag just baggy paper bag waist rayon shorts the kids love these they're wearing them with crop tops and little um bralette tops but these big baggy oversized shorts in, in the in this print these will probably sell for like 40 40 bucks or so um this is a, a shirt that i love that katie tried to steal from me yesterday um Unfortunately, it has quite a few stains on it, so I'm gonna do my best to try to get it clean. But this is just the uh, Western Eli Cattleman uh, Western shirt with snap front with roses, but it has quite a few yellow spots on it. I could try to bleach it. I probably will try to do a bleach paste, at least on those pieces, but I don't wanna bleach these satin thread roses or the red trim. Uh, and, that, and if I try to throw this in, the, in just a bleach bath, this is the type of thing that would bleach out those colors. So uh, because it was less than a dollar, I'm gonna try to rescue it. I do not do projects all the time, but sometimes I do. And, I, and if I get it clean, I'll list that in the $75 range. Uh, let's see. This is just a basic flannel shirt, Fox Racing, uh, probably 30, 40 bucks in my store. This is a heavy duty bomber jacket with a big gold uh, zipper. It's a flight jacket. It's, called, it's by a company called Alpha Industries. Uh, it's always popular. These sell well. They did a lot of military style jackets, but they also actually supplied the military with jackets at some, at one point, at different points. Um, this is not a military jacket. It's just military in style. Uh, those are sold to the general public. They used to sell for a lot more. You used to be able to get at least hundred dollars for them. I think that's probably closer to 65 or so now. I haven't checked in a bit but there you have it um i don't very often pick up coach bags as most of you know by now coach doesn't sell the way it used to uh, it's not exactly a luxury brand anymore vintage leather coach bags all day long please pick those up um but the ones that have just the prints on them there are only a handful that sell well enough for you to pick up for resale also because they're usually beat to heck right um, and if you don't know if it's real then you probably shouldn't even bother to pick it up because there are a lot of fakes out there. However, this is one of the real ones. This is one that I did pick up. Again, it came from the bins, so I didn't pay a ton for it. But uh, this is a popular uh, brand and a pop, I'm sorry, a popular style. And it's in really nice shape. It's got, again, a couple little spots on it inside and out that I will clean. Um, I may even throw this in the washing machine. I don't know, I haven't looked at it yet. But this is one that I could actually get about $100, $150 for even used. So that was worth picking up. Uh, very basic red handkerchief uh, type of pattern. This is Vera Bradley. Also not a brand I pick up very often, but they definitely sell, especially the retired patterns, the bigger bags, the diaper bags, the overnight bags. They sell. It may not sell for a ton, but I'll, I'll get a solid $30 out of that. And I paid two because it's under a pound. Let's see. Hold, please. Um, I did pick this up. This is just a vintage Star Wars flat sheet. Uh, and it's not a super old one. I think I found the date here earlier. I think it was 2001 maybe. Uh, but people buy craft flat sheets for crafting and creating things. This could be turned into a, a curtain or whatever. So I'll probably list it for like $30. It cost me three or four. Um, I don't know if this is any good. I don't buy sports jerseys very often. I'm not a sportser. I don't do it. But um, I do know this is like the Dallas, I think it's Dallas Mavericks. Um, and this was a, uh, a big size jersey and it's Reebok and it's licensed and I don't know. We'll see. I have no idea what it's worth. Could be worth nothing. Could be a player everybody hates. I don't know. Um, Vintage Polo Ralph Lauren, just a um, red quarter zip type of uh, ribbed sweatshirt or sweater type thing. Uh, this will sell for, it's 
it's 100% cotton. This will probably sell, this is 90s. This will probably sell for like 40 or $50. It's gonna sell on Etsy or Poshmark for some reason vintage polo stuff sells really well on Etsy, especially to other countries. So keep that in mind if you list there. Uh, vintage, let's see, Bugle Boy, this is probably 90s, Bugle Boy Company, men's uh, kind of like a chambray, it's almost a denim, but it's a soft denim, uh, button front shirt, it's just like a camp style shirt, 30 bucks or so. Again, I paid $2 for most of this stuff. Let's see what else we have. Talked briefly about Western blazers. Here's another one. This is Pioneer wear. This is just a brown uh, vintage corduroy uh, blazer, but it has the suede pockets. And the back of it, it has the long notch lapel, but it also, the back of it is has the yoke. It's a double yoke, which makes it that Western kind of look. Those sell for 75 uh, to $100 all the time. Uh, those of you that watch regularly, you do know that I love to pick up linens, I like towels, I like curtains, I like all kinds of stuff, uh, blankets especially. This is a vintage uh, Yu-Gi-Oh towel. Katie actually grabbed this one. Um, it's not worth a ton, but I will still list it. It's probably worth about 20, 25 bucks. I have not looked this one up, but this is a vintage 1970s um, Sesame Street towel. Thought that was super cute. Little bath towel. I have no idea what it's worth. In my mind, 30 or $40 could be worth more, could be worth less if there's a ton of them, I don't know. Uh, this is a vintage 70s uh, shower curtain, still in the plastic, maybe early 80s, but probably late 70s. I will list this somewhere around 40 or $50. Vintage patterns as far as shower curtains and towels are worth picking up because lots of people decorate in a certain aesthetic. So they're gonna decorate, like we have one bathroom here, one of our bathrooms is decorated in a um, mid-century 70s type of Hollywood Regency, 60s, 70s, gold. And I have a lot of vintage items in there, including vintage towels. So people like to get vintage towels to complete a look, whether it's in a bathroom or a bedroom or what have you. Another vintage towel I picked up, this is like dead stock. This is just a Southwest type of pattern. And again, people like to decorate in a certain aesthetic, that's why I grabbed it. It's also 100% cotton and it's clearly vintage. It's probably a $30 or $40 towel. I'm almost done, just a couple of more. This is a really, really cute little girl's dress that I picked up. I grabbed it and I do this for men's and women's clothing as well. I grabbed it because it said made in Paris. So the brand is Jacadi, Jacadi, J-A-C-A-D-I, and it's made in Paris. Uh, so the fact that anything is made in Paris or made in Europe or made in Italy usually is enough to give you pause to at least check it out and see if it has good resale value. And this does. Um, I think I can get about 30 or $40 for this little toddler dress. And I paid, what, maybe 50 cents? Because it's tiny and light. We've got a whole lot of stuff I'm not even showing you that is super boring bread and butter stuff that's going to be the $20, $30 price range, the kind of things that you guys already already know to pick up. So nothing super exciting there, but I did want to show these. These are late 90s, early 2000s. They're vintage. They're the brand Plug, P-L-U-G-G. -G. Just a teen brand like Mud or LEI, and that's what these are. These are dead stock. Um, flare leg, low rise. Um, pants and that look is back and because these are dead stock I'm easily going to ask 75 for them they're super lightweight uh, let's see more sheets character sheets vintage sheets I love these this is vintage I actually had the pillowcases for this like a month ago I sold two pillowcases for $50 and it was this exact pattern all I had were the pillowcases so it's vintage um, Muppet Show, so it's got just Miss Piggy and Kermit the Frog on it. This is just a fitted sheet, uh, and it looks like it's a twin size. Not worth a ton, but probably at least $25. Again, people buy these to make things out of vintage sheet fabric and vintage sheet patterns, especially the character stuff. And then lastly, I have this duvet cover that I grabbed. I picked it up because it felt like very nice quality, 
and I was able to find the tag on it and it is Crate and Barrel. And it's just this dove gray duvet cover with ties and zips and it just has this really nice textured type of um, fabric. I don't know if it's queen size, king size, I don't know anything yet, I gotta wash it. But for the um, probably five, six, seven dollars or so that it cost me because of the weight, if this is Crate and Barrel, I'll list it for like a hundred, I mean it is Crate and Barrel. If it's in good shape, I'll list it for like 150 bucks. And that's it. That's all I have for this haul, and Katie is next. Okay, a little change of venue here. I'm actually in my inventory room uh, because we've got all the dogs here and there's a lot of noises and barking and whining and crying and being cute. Um, but I just figured it'd be easier to do this upstairs. It's currently the 4th of July. I've got my Uncle Sam Mountain Dew vintage t-shirt on uh, for the 4th of July. But uh, this has been a weird um, video because it's kind of been stretched out over a few days. Um, normally, I like to do it all where we go to the bins, we do our haul, and we have it all, and it's all like the same day, same haul, but whatever. It is what it is. This is how we are doing it. We are going to be making a few changes to um, our channel coming up, uh, kind of changing how we do our Sunday live show, um, so it's a little bit uh, shorter and doesn't have the haul part, but then um, doing probably one, if not two, of these pre-recorded haul videos every week because it just makes more sense and then Sunday will be dedicated more to the sales aspect and chat. So doing like, you know, our numbers for the week and doing, um, you know, what sold in the past week and then also getting a chance to actually like hang out with you guys in the chat and, and uh, stuff like that. We'll see how that goes because we are getting like a really good response to these pre-recorded videos and it just makes it less confusing for us not having to be like, okay, we can't show this stuff in this video because otherwise we're not gonna have enough stuff for the Sunday video. Anyway, let's get into it. Let me show you uh, some of the stuff that I got um, this week at the bins. Like I said, I prefer doing it all like, this is everything I got today and moving forward, we're gonna be able to do that every time. It's just kind of all screwed up this week. Anyway, this first shirt I have is, uh, it's just a button down, you'll see this. CSA tag. Um, usually when you see this tag, it's something about sports. Um, you'll see it on t-shirts and sweatshirts. This is a button-down shirt, but it's embroidered with Raiders. I have no idea what this is worth. I haven't looked any of this stuff up, but I would imagine at the very minimum I could get 40 to 50 bucks for it. Maybe I'll find um, some comps on this will be more, uh, but still good because for the most part, most of the stuff I'm buying, it's like I'm paying maybe a buck for, right? Um, got a lot of like just kind of mid t-shirts. Uh, this is UCLA and you know, just about anything UCLA that's vintage, um, I sell really well. This is a little bit different because it's the UCLA alumni band. Um, I actually think that's kind of cool because if you were somebody who was in band at UCLA, then you're really gonna want this, but it's made in the US. Um, this, I'll probably price this originally, I'm really sorry about this not focusing. I price this originally probably at like 70 bucks um, but otherwise, you know, as long as I can get at least 40, 50 bucks for it, I'll be happy. Next up, I used to pick these up. I don't feel like they sell as well. I haven't gotten this in years because I kind of have been pushing my price point up. But again, only paying a buck. Um, these are kind of fun. These big dog t-shirts. So this one is big dogs don't scratch. This is from 2004. Um, to, you know, we say vintage is 20 years, so 2003, but I'll, I, usually with these I'll still list it as, you know, vintage, Y2K, and then it'll say 2004. Um, but this is a nice big size, of course, it's like a, like a 3X or something like that. But I think I can get like 40 bucks for it. Next up, I've got this Woody's Longboards t-shirt, Hawaii, uh, based on the tag. I don't think this has any date on it. This does have some staining on it. I'll probably have to wash it and bleach it. I don't see a date, but based on this Hanes tag, that's going to be um, probably early 2000s because it's made in El Salvador, so I'd say early Y2K. So that's what I would list it as. Uh, this, I mean, I'll probably list it for 48, but hope to sell it for at least 30. Uh, next up, not super exciting. I just have a blank uh, vintage, probably again Y2K, could be late 90s, but probably Y2K. Um, just blank Fruit of a Loom sweatshirt, but it's a really nice heavy and it's that feathered gray, which is very popular. I can hopefully get like about 30 bucks for that. Next up, another Heather Gray sweatshirt. This is one, one is a hoodie. Uh, this is actually 
2004 Nevada State Swimming Championships. So it's very, obviously very specific. I think the graphic is really cool. I like all these like kind of like college and high school sports kind of um, items. Uh, I just think it's cool. It's kind of fun. This is 2004. That, I mean, what, maybe I paid $2 for that. Uh, too late to get this stuff listed, but I got some good America stuff. Um, I don't buy everything that's like, you know, kind of patriotic America t-shirt stuff because it doesn't necessarily sell great. It depends on what it is. Um, this is uh, on a Delta tag. It says knit in USA assembled in El Salvador. So that generally means it's probably late 90s or early uh, 2000s. Um, but one of the reasons why I grabbed this one is because you guys know how I like my Jesus tees and it tends to sell really well. Um, is This one says America, God shed his grace on thee. From the fullness of his grace, we have received one blessing after another, John 1, 16. So it does have like a Bible verse on it. Um, so I feel like that gives it a little bit of a double appeal. Sorry, it's a little dark in here. I don't actually have a light in this room because um, I don't really need it for pulling inventory. So we're just going with the light from the, the window. But sometimes when I'm holding stuff up closer, it gets super dark. Um, next up, this again is on Delta Tag. This says Knit in USA assembled in Mexico. That makes it more likely to be late 90s. Again, it's late 90s, early 2000s. But the Made in Mexico part tends to be more 90s. Um, but this is, you know, American flag, but it's the peace symbol, um, peace sign. So, I mean, these 30 to 40 bucks maybe. Um, and then I have, it's funny, I got all these this last week, but, you know, didn't have time to, to list them and get them to where they can actually be shipped out, even if they did sell same day. But I did get a bunch of, uh, of patriotic stuff. Um, this is pretty dingy. It needs to be probably washed and bleached. Um, it's a little small, but it is actually vintage single stitch uh, all around. This is probably 90s, um, but and like I said, it's like a, definitely a small, but it's a really cool kind of all over print distressed. Uh, you can see here, let me see if I can find a good spot. Here we go. You can see here the single stitch, it's kind of a white threading. You can see the white threading going across there, single stitch. That one I'll probably list for 48. Next up, not too exciting. This is uh, this vintage, 2003. But for your uh, Oakland A's, which are soon to be coming to Vegas, um, it says celebrating three million fans. So just a basic Oakland A's t-shirt. It's an XL. But yeah, this is how you learn your tags, guys. So this is from 2003, and you look at uh, you look at this Gildan tag and the heavy cotton kind of thing. You know, that and Googling like tag history, guild and tag history, um, it's just a really good way to get familiar with your tags and be able to get to a point where you can actually date t-shirts quickly um, without necessarily having a date right on the shirt to help you out. All right, this is not vintage. It doesn't have a tag, but just based on the construction, I mean, I'd say it's probably, I mean, maybe it's like 10, 15 years old, but I like the National Park stuff. And this is a Zion National Park. It's got a really cool graphic on the back of it. Um, has a spell out, what does it say? It just says Zion, Utah down the sleeve um, and they're on the front. So again, this is a pretty, it's a little smaller size, pretty light, so I paid less than a dollar for it. I got a bunch of kind of track and field type shirts. Uh, this is from 2001. So again, guys, learn your tags. 2001, this is on a Gildan tag as well. Ultra Cotton, made in Dominican Republic. I mean, see that tag right there? See that focuses in? And uh, this is um, track and field 2001 state championships, Nevada. So I'm assuming this is like high school. I can look that up, but it says NIAA. I'm assuming that's like a high school league. But you know, this is the kind of stuff that, you, like a shirt like this, it doesn't really have like a really cool graphic or anything on it. It's probably more likely gonna go to somebody who actually participated in this at some point. Um, but sometimes they have really cool graphics and anybody who's into like track and field and vintage might be interested in it. You never know. That one I'll probably just list at like 30 bucks. Um, this one is 2000. So again, learning your tags. You got your all style tag. So this is from 2000. This says assembled in Mexico from US fabric. Okay. It also has like the nice wide collar. Uh, this says Las Vegas Invitational 2000. It's got, you got your little dice there and everything. Fun, fun. Maybe I'll list that for 40. Hope to sell it for at least 30. All right, another, so we got rid of all their track and field stuff. 
This one is from 2004. And let's see what the tag is on this one. This is like a real good kind of Gildan tag study. But here's your Gildan tag. Let me get that up there. 2004 Mountain West Conference Championships Indoor Track and Field, Colorado Springs. Uh, oh, this is this is college because it says Air Force, BYU, Colorado State, New Mexico, San Diego State, UNLV, Utah, and Wyoming. So this is college track and field. Um, and it's long sleeve. I'll probably list this one for do the, my $48.99 um, price point. All right, next up, this is, does this have a year on it? 2000, 2000. So again, we've got a Gildan tag. This is a 2000. So these are all either from someone who did track and field, competed in high school and college. This is all their stuff or some of this, this NIAA. I guess this probably is like college. I don't know. Or it's high school. Somebody in the comments might know. Um, but this is cool. Nevada State Championships. I like the graphic on that. It's kind of cool. Next up. All right. Got a couple jackets here. Let's skip that. Um, next up I have, uh, it's funny because I, we went um, thrifting at the bins for a third day and I got another one of these, but this is a Levi's. I don't know if this is necessarily vintage, but this is a Levi's denim shirt, but it's a Western one and it's got the, um, it's got the pearl snap buttons. Okay. And actually this is the one that has, uh, just the one point on each pocket. The one I picked up uh, just yesterday when we went actually has, like, I think they call it the shark tooth or something like that. And it's got two points on each pocket, which is pretty cool. But I'll still be able to sell this for at least 50 bucks. I should be able to because it's that Western Pearl Snap. Really popular. Next up, this shirt is filthy. This is, uh, this has a date on it. So again, keep looking at your tags, guys. Learn your tags. This is 1997 is the, is the date on it. So here is that Hanes beefy tea tag. Okay, so that's what that looks like in 1997. Uh, and it says made in USA, uh, fabric made in USA, assembled in Mexico. So again, that Mexico, USA, late 90s. Anyway, this is the Doheny Supply Pig Feast. Just kind of a fun graphic on the back. And then it's a pocket tee. Um, this I'll probably try to sell for like 40 bucks, but it's filthy. It needs to be washed, probably bleached too. Uh, now this last t-shirt I actually got from Vicki. Um, she, I, I usually, I'll find stuff and give them to her if it's something I'm not that excited about and vice versa. She grabbed this one and we got home and she just threw it with my stuff and I'm like, oh, what's this? Uh, this is actually basketball and I think this is high school. It should be high school, but this is, so this is 1994. So let's look at the tag. The tag is the Juanita tag. Okay, Power T, it's a 2XL. This is pretty dirty too, it needs to be washed, needs to be bleached. This is Lincoln, California. So Lincoln Hornets, California State, Champions, State Champions. It actually has the players on it. What would be really cool is if one of these players ended up being like, a, like an NBA player. Um, I don't know if I recognize any of these names. Keith Hurley, Deshaun DeGreat, Raman, Raman Anderson, Rod Moore, Mark Sanford, Derek Davis. Lewis Johnson, Carter Conley, Kenny Davis, Darcel Sharp, Terrell Cade, and Anthony Smith. Are any of those guys NBA players? I don't know, but that'd be pretty cool if I had like their high school t-shirt, right? Um, I'll do some more research into that because if one of those does end up being somebody actually known, then it could add some value. Otherwise on its own, I mean, it's pretty cool. I would try to sell it for at least 50, but you know, who knows how long it would take to move that. All right, let's look at some, I got some jackets. Um, this first jacket I have is it's Timberland, let's see what does it say? Timberland Weather Gear. So you can see it's got that leather, that really nice leather tag. This is vintage 90s. Um, you can see on the tag it's made in Korea. It's cowhide. It's a very nice soft leather, um, leather bomber jacket. I think I can sell this for a hundred bucks. It's in really nice condition, but it's, it has got some nice wear to it, like in a good way. Um, it's got this really cool detail in the back, like the leather behind the collar. Uh, but this, I think, uh, I think I could sell it for a hundred bucks. It's, it really is a nice shape. It's got a nice zipper pole with the little, um, Timberland graphic on it. And it's a really nice bomber jacket in excellent condition. I'm hoping to be able to sell it for a hundred. Next up, I'm a little bummed about this. I don't know if I'm going to be able to do anything to fix this or if I even should bother. 
but <clears throat> I've been getting like some different blazers and stuff lately depending on what they are. This corduroy style is, is really popular right now and the colors in this are great. Um, I picked it up because I saw, you know, the corduroy, I saw the leather wrapped buttons, um, which when it's actually leather and not plastic lets you know that it's vintage. And it had like that old school Macy's uh, tag on the inside. And it just looks really cool. I love like the, the plaid um, underneath the collar. And it's got this little doohickey. I don't really know what you do with this little thing, but whatever. Um, I just thought it was a really cool blazer. The problem is, once I got home, I was looking at all the buttons, and then I went to go look at the ones on the cuff, and this side, you can see two of them are missing, and this side, all of them are missing, and I know you can buy like replacement uh, leather wrap buttons, but usually they're the bigger ones. I don't know if I can get the little ones. I don't know if it's worth the money to do it. I mean, if I can find them easily and they're cheap enough, maybe I'll try it because Crystal can always sew those on for me. Um, so it's not like, you know, they say not to buy projects, but if, if you have somebody who can do it for you, you can pay to do it for you. That's not necessarily a bad idea, but I need to do a little more research before I, um, before I commit any more time or resources to it. Because I don't want to put all this money into it and I'm only going to sell it for 40 bucks or something, you know. But I was excited about it. Next up, I've got this really cool, again, I haven't done research on these. I've got this really cool George Roth of Germany. I showed it to Vicky. There were a couple shirts I picked up. One of them was a no-go. And this one she said she's had sold before. And uh, it is definitely vintage. I'd say um, based on the collar, uh, it's got a little bit of a point to it. Maybe late 70s into early 80s. But it's just a really cool shirt. I love, I love this geometric kind of cool abstract design. Uh, I think it's just a cool shirt, so, you know, I've been trying to pick up stuff. If I only was doing t-shirts, there's no way I'd be able to get enough at the bins, um, especially, you know, trying just to get vintage t-shirts, so I'm having to expand back out to stuff that I used to sell that I kind of pulled away from because I do enjoy the t-shirts so much, but guess what? You got to pivot, you got to adjust, you got to be able to adapt when the market changes, um, and if you're having, you know, troubles selling stuff or uh, fast enough or high enough amounts to be able to keep bringing in new stuff. So last two things I have, uh, you know, Vicki always talks about like the, the Western, Western blazers and kind of the Western look. Um, this is a leather vest, uh, but it is a Western one. It says a word design Western apparel. Um, so it's made in the USA. You can see the tag right there. And it's just a really nice basic Western, uh, style vest. I think Vicky calls these the yokes. This has kind of a single yoke on the back, that V that points down. So it's just a, a very typical Western design to have that. This is in really good shape. I really don't know without researching it. I don't know how well these sell, how quickly, um, but it's pretty small. You know, it won't take up much room in the closet where I put my jackets. And then the last thing I got, this doesn't have any particular brand on it, but it is vintage. It's a really nice uh, leather, motorcycle biker vest and honestly like I personally have never had gotten grabbed one of these um I always buy the jackets because it really doesn't matter like what the brand is if it's like good quality heavy and it's vintage you're going to be able to sell a motorcycle jacket that has like this asymmetrical you know front zip kind of style to it um this I've never gotten one that's an actual vest that has that asymmetrical side zip not that it's uh, not that it's uncommon just that I personally have not come across this while thrifting and sourcing uh, it does have like a rip in the um, lining, but that's not a big deal. Everything else is good. It's got that nice fat YKK zipper pull. Um, it's just a really cool vest. It's got some heft to it. Uh, I don't know what I would price this at. Generally like a jacket that has sleeves that's a style. I mean, at minimum you should be able to sell one for $150 depending on what it is. You know, some obviously are going to bring more, but if it's something that's not branded or anything. I mean, I would hope I'd be able to sell this for at least a hundred, but I don't know. Maybe these are super um, popular and hard to find uh, and vintage, and maybe I can sell it for a lot more. I really don't know. I'm going to have to do some research on that. But anyway, guys, thank you so much for hanging out with us and going on this journey with us. Give me some feedback. Give us, Vicki and I, some feedback on what you think about some possible changes to the channel. Um, specifically, kind of taking the haul part out of our Sunday live haul, which means that we'd have to take that word 
out of the title, but um, and focusing on those days more on the chatting with the community, you guys live, um, going over our numbers as usual, going over our, our sales for the week, and then our pre-record stuff during the week, doing like two uh, pre-recorded haul videos where we go to the bins and then show you everything that we got. I think that could be really good and it might be a nice balance and make it so we're not doing like a two hour show on Sundays, um, but we would love to have some feedback. Guys, bonus haul. Just as I was like wrapping things up in here and cleaning up, I realized I completely forgot. Like I had a little stock of pants that I put separately. Pants, speaking of having to pick up things that I did, had kind of gone away from selling. I swore off selling pants long ago, try not to wear them much, uh, but um, cause they are kind of a pain in the ass to photograph, but I did get some pants and I had a little separate stack. So I wanted to show you real quick. So here you, you go, a little bonus haul. Um, Dickies, I got some Dickies Carpenter pants and they're the really cool uh, kind of, I don't know, what do you call this color? Tan, um, orange, I don't know, whatever, khaki. Uh, but these are, you know, the style is really popular right now. I don't know specifically what the Dickies stuff sells for, um, but you got your little place for a hammer, you got your little pockets down here. Um, they're in really good shape but also nicely worn, so hopefully I can make some good money with those. Um, Next up, now these, I don't know why I've been picking up Nautica stuff lately. I, I mean, am I like foreshadowing a trend that uh, it's coming back? I don't know. But it's really easy to um, pick stuff up that you're unsure of when you're at the bins because of how cheap it is. Uh, but these are Nautica jeans. You got the little Nautica tag on the back. Um, they're kind of, they're slightly baggy. They're not like super wide leg, but they're slightly baggy. They got a nice wear to them. I mean, no idea. I might have like totally just thrown money away with these, but uh, I figured it was worth a shot. We'll see. Um, as I've been telling you, I have been selling my Levi's 501s button, uh, button fly jeans. They seem to be doing really well on Etsy and I get $62.99 for them every time. Uh, this is actually a pair of black 501 jeans, uh, 501s and uh, they're in really good shape. They are a little bit on the smaller side. I think these are like 30 by 30. So they're a little bit smaller. Um, these are made in Mexico. I would say these are like probably, no, made in Egypt. Uh, these might be late 90s, early Y2K. I'd have to, let's see. I don't know. I'd have to do something. I'm not very good at dating Levi's. I have a hard time with it. It's easier when it says made in the USA, right? So anyway. I'll probably price these the same as my regular ones and I'll probably sell them on Etsy again for 60 bucks. Last piece. This is the main reason I was bummed about uh, forgetting that, that I had these to show and decided I would just go ahead and do it again. You remember the whole Anchor Blue jeans thing where I picked up a couple of pairs uh, that specifically said baggy in the tag. They very much look like um, in the style of like Levi's uh, um, silver, why is the word? Hold on a second. Silver tab jeans. Maybe I'll edit that. Maybe I won't. I don't know. Anyway, silver tab jeans. So I had bought those and they were really like, a dark, one was like a very dark blue, one was a black, and they both sold for like 90 bucks. Again, I'm pretty sure they both sold on Etsy. I know the last pair just sold on Etsy for $89.99. And Vicky had been like, that's just like a Kmart brand. And uh, I'm like, well, people like it. But they, they're very much like the Kmart version of the Levi's silver tab. Um, and they're selling because of the style. There's plenty of Anchor Blue that's not selling, um, but I think specifically because of the style. And then Vicky was really excited because she found some Anchor Blue uh, pants. And then look what I found, guys. I found Anchor Blue, but these are the baggy, but they're shorts. So you can see it says baggy. Um, it's a nice big size, 40. These are like a gray shorts. So I don't know how the shorts do compared to the pants. I think the pants do really well because the whole like wide like style is back. But I'm picking up some Anchor Blue, man. Is, is this like my new favorite brand? I don't know, could be, could be. All right, peace out. Let's go see if we can find some puppies. Can you please tell me, tell our audience what has, what has transpired here recently? Oh, somehow I have this one in my lap. She has claimed me and it's really upsetting. Uh, it's upsetting the little white one. The little white one, where's Trixie? Trixie! What, what do you have on your face? What do you got on your face? You got some fuzz? So this is her uh, 4th of July outfit. Ridiculous. But uh, yeah, Ripley has decided that she gets to be in Deb's lap and she fell asleep there last night. Actually, she fell asleep up on your shoulder. And then we've got Jimmy here who who's just happy he gets to be included because um, he's a good boy. He's a sweet boy. 
And then we got these babies over here. Yeah. The old ladies, they're just, uh, they're, they're snuggling because they love each other. Grizz, Grizz, can you, quit being antisocial, Grizz. Come on. Hey, Grizz, what are you doing? There we go. <laughs> so cute. And then we've got, hi buddy, I won't get too close. I know you don't like it, but you are stinking cute. I just, I'm not, I'm not going to attack you. <laughs> I promise. I won't get too close, but everybody wants to know what you're wearing. We've got our Mr. Freedom shirt on right now. Also, if you didn't notice, we do have some bow tie action happening. We've got, Ellie here's got a cute little bow tie. And then Ripley's not into it. She's not excited about it, but she does have her own bow tie. Are you sad? Or are you just tired? Just tired, she says. Okay, listen, Angel, we need you to weigh in about Anchor Blue. <laughs> What's the deal with Anchor Blue? Anchor Blue is an awesome product. Awesome vintage product. I've worn it, I've bought it. They sell jeans, they sell shorts, they sell dress shirts, casual button ups, they sell cologne. I mean, they had a whole storefront at malls. It sells, for me, it sells very well. But you used to wear it? I used to wear it all, that's, so all, I, that's all I used to own. I okay. still have one Anchor Blue shirt. Anchor Blue, right Anchor Blue or Silver Tap? Anchor Blue all day. Anchor Blue or Silver Tap? Silver Tap. Uh -oh. Why? It's Levi's. It's high quality. It, it's not. Yeah, but you're putting Levi's. To well, which one's blue. still in business? <laughs> which one is more profitable? Silver <laughs> tab. <laughs> unless, unless you get a 501, what is really more profitable? Uh, silver tab. Yeah. It's more popular. Find the silver so? tab in the wild. Vintage silver tabs. They didn't start remaking them, so yeah. they have to be made yeah, in the USA yeah. or made in Mexico. That'll put them into the 80s and 90s. But Anchor Blue is not being so remade. No, you're right. You're right. But vintage is vintage. For a reason. Ooh. <laughs> Ooh. Ooh. Bingo. Ooh. <laughs> the cargo man. <laughs> cargo short man. Oh, by the way, <clears throat> break, break into our 4th of July party with his cargo pants. What do you got in there? We got Doritos in this one. Okay. Now, these aren't just cargo shorts. They, what else are they? They were pants at one time. I'd zip them off. Wow, we need we need to show a little more leg. Yeah, I sell yeah. those. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I got those at the big Happy Fourth of July. 